Hi everyone, today I have a tip for you about practicing tough passages in really any kind of music. We've all had these types of issues pop up in our own personal practice. For me, learning a piece is kind of like painting a room. Sometimes one coat of paint is enough, but usually it takes at least a few coats of paint. And then there will be some spots that for whatever reason just require many more coats of paint. <laughs> in music, these are the intervals or the passages that just require more practice than the rest of the music. The people who practice most efficiently are the people who are spending more time on the difficult passages than on the easier passages in order to get every part of the music up to the same level. What I want to talk about today is the how of this. We all know that we should prioritize the passages we have trouble with, but there are many ways to do this. The idea that I'd like to discuss today was introduced to me by my former teacher, Mike Roylance. This came up as part of our discussions while he was teaching me his warm-up or his daily fundamentals routine. Of course, there is a whole debate about whether a fundamentals routine should be called a warm-up when, if we're honest, we're pretty much warmed up after five to ten minutes of playing, but we still need to practice our fundamentals beyond that. So usually, uh, in my own practice, I'm thinking of uh, what I do at the beginning of each day as you know, some kind of combination of fundamentals, but today I'm using the term warm up just simply for the ease of speaking. Whatever your daily practice of fundamentals is, it's that that I'm referring to. As a member of the Boston Symphony and as a teacher, Mike Roylance made the point that in his life, orchestral excerpts needed to be ready to go at all times. So when we were discussing flow studies, he said that as he was working his way through flow studies in all 12 keys, he would sprinkle in orchestral excerpts along the way when he got to the appropriate key in order to test himself, in order to see what would happen if he were to take that orchestral excerpt out of context and insert it into his warm up. So for example, when we got to the key of B major, uh, he would play Ride of the Valkyries. So this idea has stuck with me, and even though orchestral excerpts are not something that I necessarily do on a day-to-day -day basis in my current life, I, I still use this idea for tricky passages that are holding me back because they aren't yet up to the level of the music around them. So for passages like that, I don't just want to take a moment that is a point of weakness and be able to get through it. I want to actually turn it into a point of strength. And one of the things I do in order to achieve that is, as I would say, I warm up a thigh that passage. I insert it into my warm up or fundamentals routine, both to test myself on it and to make myself comfortable playing it. Um, and really to increase that comfort level to the point that it goes from a point of weakness to a point of strength. I was working on this recently with one of my students who was preparing to audition for the Iowa High School All-State Band on tuba. And uh, this year one of the required etudes was Blazevich Etude Number 28. So she was working on that and, and most of it was going fine except for a few tricky passages. One of them was this chromatic passage uh, that begins on a G to G octave leap and then continues into um, a descending chromatic uh, passage, first beginning on G and then beginning on D. So the passage sounds like this with a little context. it a few different ways in our lessons. We practiced it slowly, practiced it down an octave in order to hear it better. Uh, we also practiced it with articulation instead of slurred. Um, but this passage is especially tough for B-flat tuba players because on that tuba you're crossing a, a partial break just to keep going back up to that G. So this lick actually happens to be very similar to the Remington pattern that many high school players use for a long tone warm up. Um, and with that in mind, we decided to insert this passage into the student's regular practice routine. Um, so I told her to play this not as a long tone study, but maybe directly after playing some of those uh, chromatic Remington long tones. 
Um, so I told her to take both phrases, the one that starts on G and the one that starts on D, play them down the octave, play them at pitch, uh, play them one by one, and then together start slowly and then um, had her try to work her way up to the tempo of the etude going back and forth between those two octaves. So that would look a little bit like this. her to make sure that she ended by playing this in context, making sure to actually play the first G before the high G, um, and, uh, and try to put the thing into context like that before moving on into, um, you know, her, the rest of her practice for the day. And this did seem to help her get more comfortable. Uh, honestly, by the time the audition rolled around, she felt very comfortable with this passage, I think because... She had played it a ton of times, but she had also played it in, uh, in that kind of warm-up context and then while also practicing the piece. But for her, it was kind of a nice low-stakes way of practicing that passage and getting the repetition that she really needed of it, uh, but not all at the same time. I'm also going to show you an example from some of my recent recital music. This is a small excerpt from a new piece uh, called Introduction et Danza by Fernando Dedos. Uh, this version of the piece is for F tuba, and a lot of it is, is really accessible and playable, but this one particular passage is uh, giving me trouble. It's a combination of being tricky to hear, especially at the end, uh, and tricky articulation. It moves through a large range on the instrument, uh, it also kind of comes out of nowhere. It's kind of an isolated moment, um, unlike the musical moments that are around it. So with something like this, as I said, I'm not just trying to learn it to get through it. I'm trying to get so comfortable with it that it's basically memorized. So usually my F tuba warm-up looks a little different than my C tuba warm-up. I begin by doing a chromatic warm-up through the range of the instrument. I do long tones, and then I usually do some kind of flow study. And after that, I'll play through musical examples in different keys, usually from one of the Brad Edwards books, like Patterns and Snippets, or simply singing. I think of this time as my musical and mental warm-up, so now I'm just substituting this passage in for part of that musical mental warm-up. Um, just building it up meticulously, going forward through it, going backward through the passage, um, but just viewing it as a musical warm-up instead of only doing this type of work when I'm actually practicing the piece. So it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> So that gives you an idea of, of uh, where this passage is at right now and hopefully where it's headed. Um, I have found that, especially on F2, but it can be really uh, helpful to insert something of this difficulty level into my warm-up or first part of playing for the day on that instrument. Uh, because I'm still thinking of it as a warm-up, I'm not requiring perfection of myself. I'm simply requiring myself to go through this process every day for the time being until I feel more comfortable with this passage when I actually run the piece. 
This is also something that I do as part of my warm up or secondary warm up right before a performance. I play through that tricky passage or the other tricky passages that are in the piece to reassure myself that they're in my head, that they're under my fingers. Uh, still, I like taking something like this out of its natural habitat as part of a solo piece and seeing what happens to it when I think of it more like a warm-up. This change of context is actually where mindfulness comes into the picture. One way to be mindful in the practice room is to make sure that you are not mindless. And that is something that can happen very easily when we repeatedly practice a piece over and over again in the same way, in the same order, every single day. So when I say that I'm interested in seeing what happens when I take a passage out of a solo and into a warm-up context, I mean that in every sense. What changes about my physical approach? Also, what changes about my mental approach? Mental flexibility is a huge part of mindfulness in practicing and on stage. So when I do something like this, my goal is for the mental flexibility that I gain to follow me into my actual practice of the solo and into my performance of it. So hopefully this idea is helpful to some of you out there. I'd love to hear about it one way or another if you do decide to warm up a challenging passage from the music that you are currently practicing. Uh, good luck and happy practicing.